Here we go, let's play the game. Run it! Okay, music. Lights goes on. Logo comes in, animated. More light effects, sound effects, everything. Right, character comes in a platform. That's amazing. Roar, roar, roar. Let's play the game, let's see. Okay, more lights, cool. Let's go. Um, yeah. Mm. Sorry lads, there's no gameplay or cool stuff to show here. Just built all of these scenes to call for your attention. But this video is about why I started this project fully focusing on UX and UI instead of uh, gameplay mechanics, which I already put the type, of course. Um, is this a good idea? Probably not. Uh, we'll see in the future. But I have my reasons and I want to explain that. And then you would think, uh, isn't this like building a house from the roof down? And I would say, probably yes. But I want that roof to cover me when it's raining, it's cold, I'm dark, and I'm putting floors and painting the walls and all of that stuff. You know what I mean? Well, let me explain that. When it's time of coding the game mechanics, the last thing I want is a faulty and buggy UI that blocks me constantly, forcing me to exit the game and play again to test. That leads to many frustration moments a day that must be avoided. So I decided to jump early to make a sort of fake semi-functional UI by making my own customized elements that I might need later in the most modular and non-destructive way possible. I mean, at the end, I am the only one who will run the game thousands of times, so I think UX is mandatory here. UI panels, elements, menus should be under a system that works fine in the way that they open and close smoothly and doesn't overlap with input controls. I must say, it's not an easy task, so don't underestimate it, as there are many factors and elements involved. What if I open some interface but then click another, press escape? What stands in the front? Which ones overlaps? I don't want to deal with those problems and get interrupted when things get complicated. Then I got into a first iteration of the UI design that themed the global aesthetics idea instead of just using flat styles. And as a 3D artist, always focused on a non-destructive workflow, I decided to make everything in Blender by rendering a single texture atlas. So once everything is set up, tweaking and changing everything or creating completely new design is blazing fast. But at this point, I'm not too worried on if it looks perfect until I get some sort of feedback. Feedback that I would appreciate, of course, if you have constructive one. Also, I created a debug panel in which I plan to control all the game signals and functionality. So I can call all of those same methods whenever I need, either on gameplay or just testing stuff in the debug panel itself. Yeah, of course, working on all of this beforehand has some pros and cons. So what I figured so far is that it feels more like a real thing, you know, like a game. And that's quite motivating, keeps you on, and personally Kinda enjoyed switching from design to programming from time to time. But there is not such a game yet, so it can get quite demotivating at the same time. I'm feeling like you are working on nothing. 
It's not bad to have an early detection of potential problems that you can have UX-wise. And definitely it helps with visual consistency by actually spending time on the UI. It's been time consuming definitely, but anyways, I had to work on it sooner or later. Now with all the systems done, it should be way easier to iterate on design or usability when getting feedback. It may lead to incorrect scope by doing much more than you will need later, like probably I did, but also miscalculate and getting short. And also it may lead to wrong game architecture. Even if you prototype the game, it's so difficult to figure everything that you will need in the future and surely you will miss elements that could require some refactoring. But now the development process should be way smoother and it should be easier to integrate features. So that's the main point here. So we'll see if this approach was a good idea in the future. And that's it for now. See you in the next video in which I'll kinda break down all of this work and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you are interested on more content like this. Cheers!